excuse me we are back after doing some some fishing streaming on twitch catching our first stripers of the year let's give it up round of applause that's right round of applause give it up finally caught some straight bass Let's go. So now we're going to tie some flies for the fly box. I was doing a bunch of commercial fly tying earlier today. I'm going to do some after the stream. Probably end up staying late tonight. <clears throat> All right. Have the old Joe's Garage sweater on too. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So, sorry, we just got off the water. I'm still semi-wet. I didn't even get changed, but I figured... It's already late, so let's go ahead and get cranking some flies. Get this set up. Change the angle for today. All right. I hope everyone's doing well. Welcome, everybody, on Twitch and YouTube. Um, I did put a limiter on the stream, so hopefully it's not going to peak. So let me know how the audio sounds. Mic check, mic check. Microphone check, one, two. All right. Yeah, look, I... <laughs> My sweater's still wet, but we're good. <clears throat> All right. So, let me adjust this, the volume. And you know what? Let's go ahead and switch it over to, uh, to our music. My beats. But check this out. We tied this, I think it was, was like a year or two ago on Twitch. Um, an articulated, an articulated cinder worm fly. So this is what I want to work on because we actually streamed, it's like a couple years ago, we filmed a worm hatch and we were catching fish with a floating line and, uh, you see the worms, they, they were just spinning in circles, spawning and the striped bass were going crazy. We had one fish that was like 30 inches. It's really cool. You can check it out on Twitch. It's on my highlights. But, um, so I wanted to develop a smaller fly. Normally I would tie them with a rabbit strip off the back, which has great action on the classic gurgler cinder worm. But I wanted to use articulated sections. So if you look at this thing, you strip it. I mean, it's just going to be wiggling in the water. You know what I mean? With this tail. So I'm almost tempted to do a tiny pop lip, uh, worm fly. <laughs> but so I want to tie a worm fly um with articulated sections i have some articulated sections so that's a, the goal and i really kind of want to tie a pop lip specifically for weak fish uh so that might be the goal for today so we're going to be tying some flies for the fly box and some funky ones as well i do have articulated shanks as my music loads up some smaller articulated shanks which we're going to be using i don't have a ton of the really small ones which i want but um, that's right. We'll make it work. This one is kind of the size I want it to be. You know, I really don't want it to be that long because the worms in my area generally are around that size. All right. We got some tunes made by me, myself, and I. But I appreciate everyone's tuning in. I hope everyone's doing well. I was excited to go out and actually catch some fish. Um, I think, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do something special. We'll get fancy here for this. We're actually going to put some red thread so we can kind of match the... Uh, or we could go with black. Perhaps we go with black so we won't see that on the shanks. Let me grab some thread. Actually, it's right here. I don't even need to stand up because I just organized everything. <laughs> All right, yeah, I was happy to finally catch some fish. That was fantastic. We'll go with some black. Danville flat wax nylon. But for anyone that was tuning into that, that was a lot of fun. 
We got like one fish around 26 inches, one around 24, right around there. Close. And we were fishing a jiggy, which I want to do a video. I think the next video will be on the jiggy. Will be the next uh, video on the channel that I film and put together. I'll probably do that next week. I'm trying to do one video a week. <clears throat> or probably do it this week, but or this weekend. Because I think we uh, the herring one was like six days ago, so I gotta... <clears throat> Excuse me. Once every week I'm putting out a fly time video as a goal. I should probably stick to a day. A very, like a specific day in general, but... <clears throat> Excuse me. Alright. So we're using shanks here. Um, we can cut a shank. I don't know if I actually have a pair of vice grips or anything. But we can, instead of sacrificing one of the teeny shanks, we can take a longer one and cut it. Which I just remembered about that. That's a classic thing that we were doing. Now, do I have a pair of vice grips around that I can use? I probably should have some water shanks here. Let's see. If not, I do have other shanks in there, but I'm just checking real quick. Ooh, very nice. We do have some smaller ones. They were hidden. I looked the. Uh, I looked earlier, and I couldn't find them. All right, I have some shanks I can grab. Some water ones that I know I have over here. I can cut. Got some more shanks here. I think we can actually just break them, if I'm not wrong, with sheer force <laughs> with the vise by bending them over and over again. I don't even need a pair of vice grips. I'm trying to remember, it's been a while since I've I tied this, so it's been a while since I've tied with articulated shanks in general. What do you call it? Ah, all right. Let's see. Dropping stuff. I'm going to grab a... Hmm. What size do I want to use? I think this will work. This is a 35 mil. <clears throat> we'll just use one of these. You know, I don't do a lot of larger articulated flies in saltwater. I find they're... They can be cumbersome at times, but... Smaller ones I do like. I'm pretty certain... Yeah. That does work. Bulldog jaws, baby. <laughs> we can cut off just a tiny end there. So what I can do is... And I don't have an accessory for shanks. I just clamp it in there. Didn't actually leave myself that much room. You know, I'll do it again. That's right. I'll sacrifice another one. In the name of science. Let me turn that music down slightly. Okay. So, we'll clamp this in here. I'll just bend this like this. And give us a nice little workable shank that's a little bit more. So for the end piece, what do we want to do <clears throat> for the end of the worm? I mean, it tapers pretty evenly on the worms. 
I also got to figure out what sort of material I want to use. If I'm not wrong, we might use some ram's wool for this and we trimmed it. Let's go orange with this one instead of red. A lighter orange. We can darken it up with a Sharpie as well. <clears throat> This is going to be the end here, so I'm actually going to... Now, this is a tiny little cinder worm is what we're going for. Some sort of whatever worms that hatch out here. There's multiple species. I think overall people just call them cinder worms, but there are multiple species of worms. Just take that and kind of fold that back like that. I'm thinking about using some silicone on this fly in particular. <clears throat> yeah, we got two fish, banana. We got two striped bass, our first fish of the year earlier on during the fishing stream. So that was awesome. Now I can always trim this, so. In fact, I kind of want to favor this on the shorter side, and I'll just break it up by hand. It's fine. But yeah, we did, in fact, finally break the skunk. <laughs> Let's go. We got our first two striped bass of the year, so that's great. Went out eight times. Usually, we'd, we would have caught some fish by now, so it's, it seems to be a slower start in my area. Anyone clip it? I don't know. Uh, perhaps someone did on Twitch, but if not, you can go back and find it. Hey, Jim, what's going on? How you doing? Hope you're doing well. All right. <clears throat> we'll put a little head cement on here. Let me make sure this is focused nice. I think I'll zoom in a little so you guys can see a little better. Saw the second catch. Nice. Yeah, it was good. So... We'll go with... What size is this? 10 millimeter shank these fish skulls in fact I'm gonna zoom out slightly uh, have you tried dubbing loop tails with the GSP thread I make ragworm imitations and the action is very lifelike it's hard to explain how but I'll find a video yeah I think I know exactly what you're talking about doc but no I haven't and I would love for you to uh, either maybe put a video in the discord or something like that so I could take a look at that and then we can ex uh, experiment with it. I know what you're talking about. I don't do a lot of dubbing loops. I need to. I need to get a dubbing loop tool. <clears throat> I make dubbing brushes, but that's completely different, you know. Okay, now I got to get this in there. I always forgot about how much of a pain this was at times. Especially using this larger shank for the end. I have to force it in there without jamming my finger up. I'm essentially trying to support it. And you want to be tricky, huh? Try and spread it open slightly. Essentially coming at the angle, you know, but let's see if I can just manhandle it on there. They're very tight, these small ones. <laughs> uh, I forgot, was it easier for me to put this in the vise and then do it the other way? I forgot, we developed a trick. I haven't tied these in a while. I think it was easier. Yeah, there we go. That's better. All right, that's the trick. It's been a while. Sometimes you just got to hop on the bike. Take a tumble real quick, and then you'll remember. Yep, 
Yeah, please, uh, if you could post some photos or maybe find a video on the explanation of it, Doc, or something like that. <clears throat> the stream is pretty fly. What's going on, Jay? How you doing? Oh, no, all of my... All of my shanks. This is the main size we're going to use. I think it's the smallest ones. I, I think they go down to 5 mil, but I don't even think I have any 5 mil. That would kind of be ideally the size I would want to use. They might not go down to it. I don't even know. We're essentially just going to V-tie some ram's wool and then trim it. But as we get... Uh, I can trim it in a way so that there's edges to it and that we can darken those and put some silicone on there. So I'm going to slowly increase the size of the ram's wool that I'm V-tying on there. Handing out, nice. I appreciate everyone tuning in, both on Twitch and YouTube. So, hope everyone's having a good night. We went out and caught our first fish of the year. We caught two stripers on a uh, jiggy, Popovic's jiggy, and a uh, Mark Sadati slammer with some, uh, what do you call it? With some squimpish fiber and some natural materials. So. We're working on our articulated cinderworm fly right now for the upcoming cinderworm hatches. And then we might do some sort of like a weak fish pop lip or something. I don't know. The jig was up for them. Yes. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Let me take a look. I think uh, Doc's posting a photo of a... Oh, I could actually... Duh, I'm streaming. I could take a look on the computer. Posted it for you to take a look. All right, nice. The jig was certainly up, Jay. That is for sure. Oh, wait. Uh, let me take a look. Hold on. So this is uh, Elvin uh, Brolfson on YouTube. There's a video doc link, but you can see it's some sort of dubbing loop fly. So <clears throat> it's the dubbing loop itself is tied on there. Oh, let's see. Okay, so you're making a dubbing loop. I understand it. I think I might actually have a dubbing loop tool that I got, but a very basic one. Shout out, by the way, to Elvin uh, Brolfson. So it's essentially a dubbing loop. You spin that, and then you just tie it off the back, right? Sort of. I got to take a look at it. I'm going to have to watch, but I, okay, I kind of get the idea. Very cool. Yeah, I think I have a very cheap dubbing twister, if I'm not wrong. All right, we'll take a look. We'll have to tie those. We'll probably do that next week. I'll watch that in depth. And shout out to Elvin Borofsen on YouTube. Check him out. It's the Sea Trout Flies... Uh, number 12, Perfect Leo Worm, my fly box, with Elvin Barufsen. I bought a $9 coffee can, frother cough, uh, cut the tip off and bent it, and bam. Oh, there you go. Perfect. You can make your own. He's got some awesome Norwegian, uh, nor awesome patterns. He's Norwegian. Very cool. Oh, I love that. I love uh, salmon flies in general, so I'm or sea trout flies. I'm assuming that's what that's based for. So 
So we're just V-tying these. Now, it's a lot right now, but we will trim it down quite, quite heavily. So just bear with us. This is the desired end result. We're tying the shanks right now. And you can see this one. I'm trying to trim it in a way that you'll probably end up seeing those the connections where the thread is, but I'm tying this one with black, so it's a little bit more subtle, and it kind of matches the cinderworm vibe with the uh, orange and black. Now, I did, I want to mention, I did get these beads. They're called Cyclop beads or whatever. I don't know. It's just a bead. I'm going to add this. I'm going to use hard mason mono in between the, as the connection between the um, articulated shanks and the hook. And then I'm going to put a bead in between it just so I can have a nice bright orange bead. Because you know what? Why not? Kind of an ode to the meat chucking flies. <laughs> We'll get another shank here. Put this one. <clears throat> I think we put the new shank on there is what we determined, right? Yeah. New shank makes it a little bit easier because these are pretty tight. Then I could slip that on there. I should, uh, we'll put some head cement on this one as well. And I think I did a lot of, I essentially went Ram's wool the whole way. I think we're just going to use crystal stats for the, uh, for the belly on this one. Hey, Wolf, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. Appreciate you tuning in. How you been, man? Hope everything's been good. Yeah, unfortunately, in case you folks on YouTube or Twitch <coughs> are wondering if I end up talking to uh, the, vice versa, uh, I unfortunately cannot show both chats. I would love to, to have both chats in one, but unfortunately I can't. Or I can, I can have both chats in one for myself, but I can't, uh, what do you call it? I can't uh, show it on stream on Twitch, YouTube chat, so... Doing okay? How are uh, how are we doing? Good, man. Good. I'm glad to hear you're doing good. We uh, we just caught our first stripers of the year, so that was great. It's good getting out. I've been doing a lot of commercial fly tying, staying busy. We've been trying to stream more, so. But I'm glad to hear you're doing good. I'm just putting some head cement on that back piece. Yeah, yeah, we streamed some fishing earlier on Twitch, so you can take a look at the VOD. We caught uh, two bass, so that was good. Cover with some sea lice on their head. There are definitely fish that migrated into the bay in probably the last week or so. Because <coughs> we haven't been catching anything. I don't think there's been any holdovers or anything. We've been fishing for like two weeks. make this one a little bit longer as I start going up we only need a couple shanks but I you know technically the more shanks we have the more action right but <clears throat> now honestly this might not be a terrible fly to be fishing earlier today there were bass really shallow that were sipping bait <clears throat> now I don't know if it was bait fish or it was a uh, shrimp or something but a fly like this I feel like we could drift with a floating line and do pretty good because they were literally about right at my rod tip earlier today around sundown and they were definitely eating something small i bet let me take a little bit of this out if i can let me retie that actually i don't want to add too much i'm going to do a couple of ties on this one We'll split, you know, kind of split it up a little bit. Spread it out. Hey, Rev, what's going on, man? How you doing? Are you painting up some guard? Hope you're doing well. I 
All right, we'll probably do like three collars. I mean, we'll do three ties here. Yeah, I would love to catch a weak fish. That's the goal. We're going for some weak fish at some point here. It's kind of like a giant fuzzball at the moment, but it will be something here in a little bit. Let me just grab a little bit for the bottom here. Hey, Robert Park, how you doing? <clears throat> Thanks for the uh, saltwater uh, tie-in vids. Oh, thank you. No problem. Thank you for watching them. I'm glad you enjoy them. We have... What are we working on next? Oh, the next video is going to be a uh, Popovix Jiggy Fly, which is what we just got our first striper of the year on as a nice alternative to Clousers, which I kind of get bored of tying at times. <laughs> but uh, thank you. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. And now we get to share our live fly tying streams, which I've been doing for many years on Twitch. We get to do it on uh, YouTube now, too, so that's great. But uh, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it. Thank you for the kind words. We're working on an articulated cinder worm. This is like a little prototype we tied not too long ago when we had an amazing cinder worm hatch while we were fishing on twitch and uh i found just either slapping on it on the water or twitching it was doing the best and the problem is with like a regular i have to redo this the problem is with a regular rabbit gurgler is uh it just didn't have enough action for just like like the cinder worms were spinning in circles i was watching them so i was like waiting for a fish to boil and I would drop it, twitch it a little and boom, they would eat it. <clears throat> but I had the best results with that. So I wanted to, I'm thinking the articulated shanks on this, look at the action on it. I mean, this thing's just gonna, you twitch it and the current, I think it's just gonna be jiggling like crazy. So that's kind of the idea. I'm sure I'm probably not the first one to do it, but. When is a cinder worm hatch? It's gonna be in um, probably, oof. It's going to be in May at some point. That's just egg material. It's ram's wool. <laughs> egg material. Look, you won't be catching me tying egg flies. All right. I actually have egg material, by the way. I bought it up while we were upstate uh, steelhead in one year. And then I was like, oh, why did I even buy this? <laughs> Nothing against it, but I'm not an egg fly tire, we'll just say. In the long run. Yeah, the trout guys. That's just egg egg fly material. <laughs> now, what I kind of really want to do, and maybe we will. I mean, it's not very practical. Like, because you really just need something like this. But what if we did a miniature, like a really small pop lip worm fly? I'm just saying. Could be pretty cool. Articulated miniature pop lip worm fly. Now we're getting into like rocket science. <laughs> Not really, but. You've done a few. Hey, I'm sure they work great. I know what is it called? The crystal meth or whatever? Steelhead flies? That's like an egg fly. I love that. That always cracks me up. That reminds me of the video that we did with the Albies. With the uh, the crack colored and the... Because there's literally a crack colored Albie uh, epoxy jig. 
So I was like, the crystal meth jigs, you could see the discoloration in the teeth of the fish. <laughs> like, uh, it always cracks me up because I met this old guy on the same river. He's like, you got to get crystal meth flies. They're the best. And I was like, all right. It always cracks me up. They're like these little nymphs or something. Do you know the crystal mess or whatever they're called? They're like, they're not even, they're not egg flies. They're like a, like a flashy material. And I mean, he was catching fish left and right. So I was like, all right, we got to get some crystal meth flies, the fly pattern that is. YouTube's over there, like, ready to hit the ban button. <laughs> Twitch is like, party on, dude. <laughs> and then kicks in the corner with their glasses upside down, like, yeah, all right. Who wants to gamble? Reminds me of the se Sequisha skit he used to do in the channel. You have to make some? Yeah. Great flies. Great flies. So I'm going to start making the material just a little bit longer now. Again, I'm slowly making it longer. It's probably going to be our last shank here. And kind of get a better idea with the V ties. I'm tying a little less material and just do more frequent ones. And I do both at once, but you can just tie it and then fold it back. Essentially what we're doing here, I'll try and show you on camera. I'm tying it so that the material's offset. It's a classic V-tie like this. And then I fold it back in the direction that it was originally opposite of. Tied, you know, um, it's facing this way, let's say. And the other side that is facing towards the front is facing that way. So I fold it back that way to cover the, the gap. It's a pretty hard thing for me to explain that's extremely easy but i don't know why but that's fine the classic v tie like before i was we were talking about it like the sadati slammer before the hollow tie it was you had to do certain there were certain techniques you had to do to try and tie big flies you know v ties were one way you could like tie synthetic material and trim the head or something or just build stuff up, kind of similar to how the Kinky Muddler evolved by Johnny Kings. But like the Sadati Slammer, for instance, he was high tying, low tying, using giant slop and hackle, using wire and stuff to extend it. Before Popovix kind of revolutionized everything with the the hollow flies and using nice lawn, kind of a fancy, expensive bucktail. Now expensive. Back in my day when I was a kid, you used to, five dollars used to get you crazy bucktails. I remember Saltwater Edge had like these custom bucktails. Some of the best bucktails I've ever got were from Saltwater Edge. Oh, they were so good. My buddy got like an estate buy of fly tying material from like an old estate of somebody who passed away and it was all Saltwater Edge bucktails and they were gorgeous I couldn't even tell you they were like unbelievable they'd be like $20 bucktails nowadays from somebody that specialized in selling really nice long bucktails all for the butt end of a deer <laughs> for those for that white Nice long white hairs that you see when you when you spook a white tail, they go running. And I'm thinking, man, that that'd be great hollow fly material right there. Try not to get too clunky. It's alright. It's not this is not looking pretty, this these threads and stuff here at the top, but this is all gonna be hidden anyway, so I just gotta make sure it's secure and it's glued well. Again, it just kind of looks like a mess at this point, a giant fur ball, but 
once we trim it up here. It'll hopefully look like a worm. And I'm going to purposely try not to trim the sides too much so we get that. Like we're going for a flatter profile, right? It's a goal. All right, I think that's like four shanks. That's more than long enough. This is going to be longer than the last one we did, but that's okay. Excuse me. I was thinking about adding a bead. I don't know if I'm going to add a bead to this one, now that I think of it, because I think we should just really tie it to the shank. Um, now, finding the right hook for this, preferably using something pretty small, maybe a size 2 to size 4. What do we got? I think we're just going to stick with the, I have some size four big game hooks. I think that's what I'm going to use. By the way, I hope everyone's having an awesome Friday night. Appreciate everyone tuning in. Oh, it felt good to catch some fish. First dry bass of the year. It's been way too long. I didn't catch any last year. I was so busy working. Okay. Yeah, we're using a size four for this. You know what? Oh, man, but do I do it? <laughs> do I want to tie a pop lip? Is the question. Oof. That's going to be a lot of work. I think I do want to tie a pop lip later. So we are going to be working with silicone, anyways. All right, let's do it. Why not? We already have a regular articulated one. Let's buy a pop. Small enough lawn shank hooks. I have some size one O'Shaughnessy's Mustads stainless steels. Now the problem is we're not going to be able to have too big of a lip. We're not going to be able to have too large a fly in general, but we're going to see if we can replicate a cinder one with a pop lip. I don't. <laughs> this is going to be more just almost for fun. I guarantee you it'll catch fish. 100% I guarantee it'll catch fish, but it's uh, definitely going to be an experiment for sure. Let's get one of these on the shank here. Actually, first I want to, let's see, can I connect this? I'm reusing what I broke earlier, or cut, I should say, to make that tiny piece. Go ahead and do this learn my lesson so you can see boom 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 and it looks like a rabbit's foot at the moment but it will look like something once we trim it I'm gonna wait till it's all done to trim it I could mess with it right now, but that's all right. I tell you what, I do want to break that so it's not very long. So real quick, I'm just going to put this down. Let's do this. Like that. Boom. Now we're good. 
It's the beauty of a Regal Revolution vice. Regal Jaws. Bulldog. Bulldog bite. All right. Now we have four, technically, I guess, five articulated sections because the back piece. One, one, two, three, four. Okay, it's four. But five, There's a, that's the fifth connection. We're cheating. But yeah, that's, that's good. So now I'm going to build the body up. Um, now I could honestly just use ram's wool for the entire thing. To be honest with you do i want to is this the part where uh, there's no reason to add a rattle or something to a cinder worm fly but but i could but i'm not going to because this thing's so small just kind of blend this here um hmm i guess we're just going to use the rams wool the whole way it's perfect Fold that back like so. Oh. Kind of haphazard V ties as long as I'm covering it. That's fine because we're going to trim it. Using up quite a lot of my orange ram's wool, but that's kind of the reason why I bought it for stuff like this. I do like throwing orange in general into flies nowadays. That was something one of my buddies, Tyler, loved to do. I, can't, I take some inspiration from that from him. Like the clown fly. Orange and chartreuse clouser that he swore by for Albies. Once we get to the edge of that shank, I'm going to start doing regular ties for the, um, in fact, I think, well, it's just going to be tough, but I think we can. By regular ties, I mean for the pop lips. There's a certain thing that we do. Where's my, did my brush fall? It might have. That's right. I brushed some of this stuff before. What we do is cut off some ram's wool, like so. Then I splay it open. And I essentially just go straight down the middle. And I tie it right in the middle like if I was spinning deer hair. And then I open it again. I fold my... or get kind of a channel like if we're hollow tying and I get my thread in front of it and then boom we're good to go and then I do it all over again essentially I am gonna put some super glue right there to se secure that shank a little better essentially did that all over again and did I drop the ram's hole? Yes I did. I always drop the ram's hole. We'll keep doing the same thing now. I'm pulling the smaller hairs out just to make it a little easier when trimming. So I'll kind of grab it from the front fibers and pull towards the back. Now again it's like a pop lip 
cinderworm fly even practical in terms of imitating them? I don't think so. But is it going to catch them? I think it will. I really do. Maybe not. But it'll be really cool. We'll find out. There's only one way to find out. If not, we have the regular articulated one or the gurglers or... I'm definitely going to have a whole little box, mini box, just of cinderworm flies. Because I want to go cinderworm hunting this year. Looking for striped bass with blitzes. Just filling up the shank now at this point. Classic pop lip Ramswell building for silicones. Or silicones. Silicones, I'm sorry. I always get the name mixed up on them. I think we're about ready to trim it because then we're gonna the next step is making the lip now I think we might tie this and then we might tie the next fly as well because that way we can glue or we can silicone both flies at once because I want to tie a weak fish pop lip so instead of getting covered in silicone and then not or whatever so I think we'll tie this get everything ready and then we'll silicone it we still need to trim it at the moment. Now, where is my brush? Did my brush fall or something? I do need it. Oh, it did fall. this and by this I mean just bending over <laughs> Good. Uh, the old back all right perfect <laughs> 160 segments oh man yeah no wonder why they were doing dances there I'll have to make like a little edit just to show a little bit of the action but man I got some amazing cinderworm footage Robert we were streaming on twitch like two three years ago it was definitely the best cinderworm hatch I've experienced but uh yeah, those cinderworms were doing essentially like figure eights in the water. It was very interesting. It was very hard to replicate. So no wonder why they were so athletic. Now this is pretty big too. This is kind of the size I recommend. Or at least the size that they were around my area. But looks like something out of Dune. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. This thing's definitely pretty wild at the moment. All right. Now we're going to need to go to town trimming on the, trim this thing. Now, I'm specifically not trying to trim the sides too much. Now, how would I make the pop lip body with the ridges on the sides? I guess I have to be very specific with trimming. Or I could just color it. But anyways. I'm not making a very large body at all. I'm going to trim the top and bottom first. Pretty flat. And 
I'm not going to trim the sides too much. I'm just going to trim this off camera real quick because it's much easier over my little basket attachment on my vise. Let me turn it around so you guys can actually see. Just essentially trimming the top and bottom off and just leaving the sides for now. It's obviously going to get trimmed down more, but I'm just trying to get a basic uh, profile going on here. He's got some crazy sideburns right now. I'll tell you that. Oh man, that sh that hook is sharp. <laughs> that mustache is sharp. Whoo! The 007, the old S4 007s. Not even technically a fly hook. This specific one. It is very sharp poked myself twice now all right this is where we get into the medis meditative state of trimming so I don't really want this to be that long I mean that wide so I'm gonna have to take this down and I'm just gonna taper it and then maybe thin it out to make it a little more natural. I probably should have just made the material shorter, but this is how we learn. So what's that? Something like this. Now I'm coming at angles to taper this down but still keep those side to side because I want to hit this with black marker. Now there is some giant, giant worms that we have in the in the sand here, in the water. I saw we had a, a worm hatch that happened. There were these really long worms, worms that were like, like a foot, two foot long, crazy stuff, like the stuff that happens in Florida for tarpon. And after uh, razor clamming, I tell you, there's a lot of crazy worms out there, so. I feel like this is the sort of thing you fish in April when razor clamming is still legal <laughs> or still open in Long Island. I'm going to definitely have to take this down some, but that's okay. In fact, I'm just going to do that right now. More practical length. There we go. Something like this looks like a goldfish. <laughs> looks like something from like Finding Nemo or something. I'll trim it down a little bit more on the sides and on the belly. Funny though, my uh, my one of my good friends, PJ, who has joined us on stream before, he uh, 
me and him fished worm hatches on the east end of Long Island, and um, he doesn't fly fish. And what he was using is largemouth bass worms, like you know the uh, the little senio worms or whatever they're called. And they were like, he was just breaking them down to make them smaller, and he was crushing fish doing that. So I feel like this could definitely work. This could certainly work. All right, now we're gonna do the lip. And then we'll probably silicone this in a little bit. We're gonna tie another one of these. I don't wanna silicone in then, because I'm gonna put gloves on and everything and get the photo flow out, all that jazz. All right, where's our bobbin? There's stuff everywhere, because we're, we're going wild. Where's the bobbin? Um, am I tripping out? Where is it? Is it on the tree? It must have fell. There it is. I was like, there's no way. It's either on the table or it's on the ground. That's where the bobbin is. All right, now we're making the lip. This is gonna be a very small lip, or at least it's not gonna be huge because this it's all dictated by the uh, size of the hook shank in terms of the gap between the hook and the uh, lip. Getting all that under fur out. Now we're going to tie it the other way, reverse, so the lawn end is facing forward. down like so so now we have a lip on it I want you to picture cinder worm crankbait <laughs> blasphemy send them to the stockades da -da -da -da. that's what we're doing essentially looks like a giant prawn Okay, maybe not cinder worm, it's a clam worm uh, pop lip. Okay, that's what it looks like at the moment. Now we need to make sure it's level side to side. This is very important when it comes to a lip. Now look at it from here. You can kind of see what we got going on when it comes to a lip and having a curvature to it. That'll come more. Essentially, yes. Essentially, just add one light layer of silicone to the ram's wool to make the lip and the body of the fly. This is a Bob Popovic's fly, by the way. It's it's a genius. It literally is genius. Some people think it's blasphemy. You know what I mean? Putting this much silicone on a fly is not a fly or whatever. I've heard it all, but I love this fly. This is, in my opinion, this was growing up as a kid, the most challenging fly for me to tie. You know what I mean? Trying to master a pop lip and not having videos and just having a book with a couple pages worth of explanation. Five, six pages or something. Uh, one thing is, though, we need to trim it, so.
kind of just get a rough trim essentially for the lip because the less material you have on there uh, if you have a ton of material what will happen is it'll kind of grab together and you'll get these gaps in the lip really doesn't work well so better to trim a good amount at the start I'm doing this over here so I don't get it everywhere, but essentially I'm just taking a little off. I should probably even take more, to be honest with you. So I should even. It's not a very big hook. But we want to leave it oversized so we can trim it. So that's what I ended up with. And we can always come behind and trim just to make I want to make sure this lip is pretty thin the main thing is keeping a thin layer of silicone so I really don't want to take too much off but sometimes you get extra on the back here so I'm just taking it like I'm very lightly trimming it From that side all right there we go there's our lip melted zagnut I mean I have no idea what that is to be honest with you yeah it's pretty cool right Robert now we still need to apply silicone to it but we're going to take a quick little break. All right. I'm going to uh, just stretch my back real quick. Every hour, hour and a half, I like to get up and just walk around a little bit because of my back. But uh, don't go anywhere. I'm going to grab another drink. We're going to tie another one of these, but in a much larger version um, with a rattle. Because I've never put a rattle. I've never put a rattle. Oh, it's a candy bar. Oh, yes. Yeah, Zagnuts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. I think I've heard of them before. Uh, it's a Euro Is it European candy or not? I'm trying to think. Zagnus. I know of... Uh, what's it called? Tobolones. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what was the triangle uh, chocolates. Um, we're going to tie some... I want to tie some pop lips for weak fish. So I've been on a big pop, uh, uh, pop lip binge recently because... I'm uh, going to essentially film a video for one at some point, so I want to make sure I have them down very well. So why not tie Cinderborn versions and stuff, right? Now, before we hit this with silicone stuff, right now, let's do this. I'm going to take a black Sharpie. And I'm going to color the edges. I got to take a look and see what the Zagnut is. Shama, Nama, Lama, Wama. All right, what's going on, Carnes? <laughs> Is that the theme song for Zagnut? Shama Lama Lama Wama or something? I feel like I need to take some of this down up here. I could see it on... This is kind of the benefit of having a camera, honestly, for some of this stuff. Pops action tonight, that's right. One of them days... essentially hitting the sides with the black you know for that classic worm look I'll do it top and bottom on both sides just on the sides and leave the middle Leave the middle orange. It's 
kind of hit the edges, the frills, you know, where those little, little articulated frills are on the worms that they probably use to help actually help them swim around and stuff. And then we'll hit the edges of the, I'm going to get, probably not use my finger for that if I'm just smart by using something else, but I was being lazy. We'll hit the edge of the pop lip with black as well. Because why not? Maybe it's like a ball of cinder worms mating. You know what I mean? Because why not? Sure. We'll get David Attenborough on it. And then we'll kind of just at the end, we'll make it all black. All right, and then we'll coat that in silicone here in a little bit. I said fly tying isn't a hobby for me, but I still enjoy watching it. Hey, that's all right, Carnes. It isn't for everybody. That's why I always recommend not buying a very expensive vise, expensive bobbins, and all the doodads. You can get a vise for 20, 30 bucks, uh, even you know probably less used. A very cheap one that just clamps to your table that doesn't have a rotary function and whatnot. It's a cinder worm war jeet. <laughs> okay. Uh, where I'm at, um, I only fish maybe three or four flies, so there's no point in tying ones I won't use when I can buy them for five bucks. Yeah, and you know, it's fine. Because if everybody tied their own flies, then I wouldn't be able to make a living. So, you know, that's fine. <laughs> I always recommend people get into it, and if they enjoy it, then perfect. Because fly tying is a great compliment to f fly fishing, but... Um, I am still happy people do buy flies so I can, you know, make a living. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick little break here, and I'm going to go watch this um, permanent marker off my hands. I'm going to go grab a drink, and we will um, tie one more pop lip. Then we're going to silicone these up. We're going to silicone the lips, and I guess we'll see how they work out. I could go test these out tomorrow down at the creek or something. We know there's fish down there now, so. See, I can't help myself but trim. I could sit here and trim these things forever. Like, I'll take a look at the belly real quick. Do I want to take some of these down just a skosh? There you go. Kind of really make sure these shanks are free to move. And whatnot. And it's got some good action to it. I guess we'll see what happens. Now I really got permanent marker on my hands, but this is obviously much larger. But I have seen worms this size hatch before, so this is kind of the size. This is a gurgler version with a little articulated tail. Uh, it's therapeutic. It definitely is, for sure. I'll buy two one-to-try fish and one to keep to imitate. Oh, yeah. So you buy two flies, banana saying. Uh, you buy one as, like, you can keep it to try and imitate, you know, and you can dis dissect it by visually by looking at it to replicate it. And then you can, you know, fish one. That's a, that's a good idea. That's a great idea. All right. We're going to take a quick little break here. Um, again, thank you. Shout out to everybody on Twitch and YouTube for watching. I uh, hope you enjoy it. We're going to just take a quick little break here, and then we're going to tie one more pop lip, this time with a rattle. I want to try and get a rattle in there. We're, this is specifically a fly for weak fish. So I want to try and tie a pink version with feathers and stuff. Uh, quite larger. But I'm thinking, like, I don't want to make it too large, right? So I bought some really big hooks recently for some, but we're just going to take a quick little break. Don't go anywhere. We got our Albie highlight. We'll play that and I'll be back.
tight, stay tight, all right? Yeah, keep it tight. Ew. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, Aiden. <laughs> Knuckle buster. Are you good? You need me to do anything? Okay, okay. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn now. I'm gonna try and get on the valve. Yeah, get on the valve. Alright, you're doing good. Keep doing your thing. I'm gonna move us away. Good job. What the fuck?
Frigates. Bobby? Frigates. Frigates. It's gotta be blooping or something. Look at Hell yeah, dude. To grab a fish like that, I mean, to grab a fly like that, a big deceiver. Alright, we're back. Yo, Gabe, what's up? How you doing? Yeah, choking truck, that'd be great. A game changer, and you, I, I use the synthetic material. Like, I have body wraps and stuff for game changers I use for that. How you doing, Gabe? All right. So now we're going to tie another pop lip. We're making a mess this afternoon. That's for sure. Oh, hooks. I'm going to go with one of these. Because we're going with, like, a medium size put this off to the side for a reason we're gonna glue these in a little bit I think I do have gloves hopefully I don't need to go back downstairs we'll see we're doing a little late night fly tying tonight after going out and catching our first striped bass of the year let's go two of them Oh, you just got done fishing for stripers? Nice. How'd you make out? Yeah, we fished the top of the tide, turn of light to sunset, and we we were fishing a jiggy and a big Sadati slammer. But uh, as the tide started dropping, we started getting them, and then I started seeing fish all over the place. So they seemingly just showed up after not really being there, and we had fish with sea lice, so they were definitely... Semi-fresh, at least. They must have just showed up within the week. Getting to my back, part of the back bay. A little bit of zap gap, and it'll last all season? Oh, yeah. Let's zoom out. This is a much larger fly. Now, I think the best way to go is a piece of easy body rattle inside of it wrap hackle around it i'm thinking that's probably the easiest way of doing this and i bought this at the dollar store when i went there with rev to get some crafting material or when i went solo but check this out for like a dollar look at all that pink easy body it's not easy body it's like knockoff some of it's you can see destroyed but perfect why not we'll use this we'll put a rattle in there We'll see if the rattle lasts. But I'm not a fan of tying rattles the hook shanks. Nothing? Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. You'll get them. Just stick with it. I was, believe me, we've been, we've been grinding. I'm with you. They just showed up to our area, I think. Now, what I'm going to do real quick. We're going to take one of our rattles. These are glass rattles 5 millimeter. Don't recommend glass if you're fishing around, uh, if you're not confident with your casting, because you will end up breaking them, it's either fishing on the boat or on rocks, jetties, but I'm going to be fishing these out on salt, on flats, essentially, around drop-offs and stuff, so we don't really have too much of a threat. I'm just tying these off at the tail, so we can have our rattle inside of there, it's like a little protective body, the easy body. Don't hit yourself in the face doing this. And I I'm going to hide this. This is going to be hidden inside hackle. Theoretically, I could have it go the whole way if I want, but... Throw a couple whip finishes on there, and then we'll just coat it with super glue and then ease, uh, head cement be safe that one did work well it's a little sloppy doing it by hand but this will be all right 
if I can do it, man. It's getting stuck there. There we go. That's fine. I'm calling it. I'm gluing it, so it'll be all right. Now we come back here. And we're gonna tie that on there like so. So now that rattle is. Why do you not like tying rattles to the hook shank? I don't know, Jin. It takes up a lot of space. It makes it more awkward for me to, um, you know, put the ram's wool on there or whatever. I'm just not a fan. And I feel like, uh, I don't know, I've done it before with larger flies, but I don't like losing the real estate. I'm a, kind of a fan of doing the easy body thing. I don't know if it's better or not. I don't know. It's just how I prefer doing it. I don't like losing the, the real estate. It's free real estate. You know what I'm talking about? Put a healthy dose of super glue on those. Let that dry out. This is my personal preference. Let's get some cheap Chinese saddle hackle. We're kind of going full dress on this one. And for a weak fish, I think probably a good like four, four and a half inches. I like the easy body solution. It's just simpler. I don't have to like try and wrap, awkwardly wrap the uh, rattle to the hook. You know what I mean? Just my personal preference. It's kind of awkward in my opinion. I'm going to tie these kind of on the belly. I've heard weak fish like pink, so we're going pink. Pink and what other color? What other color should we go tie with pink, chat? Now's your chance. On YouTube and chat, I mean on YouTube and Twitch, put your answers in the chat. What color should we go with? We got some white. That's going to be a little bit of white. It's not gonna, it's Primarily, I'm trying to make it like pink, I'm hoping. I don't even think I have pink rams wool, but we can figure it out. Oh, I know what we have, ostrich churl. We're gonna need to put some ostrich churl on there. That's gonna be good. Yeah. What other colors should we go with though? For a weak fish. I might even fish it at night, but I know pink is like a very good weak fish color. One small splash of orange. What bait fish are we going for? I mean, pff, gin. From what I heard, weak fish love pink. But that's in certain areas. But I mean, it could be anything. It could be herring. It could be whatever. This is a pop lip. It's more like we're fishing a, a bomber. Like, what is a bomber replicating? I don't know. But it catches a ton of fish. That's what we're doing. We're literally tying a bomber. We have a rattle and we're tying a lip. <laughs> and it's going to swim side to side erratically in a snake like motion add some blue I like it you know me I like the, the pink and blue but we'll put some orange in there as well for like a little cream or light brown okay we'll add a little bit of that I've got a bunch of glass rattles I should try to use for pop lips yeah I mean, they're great in general for certain flies. I'm not really super big on fishing rattles in general for saltwater. I'm more freshwater rattler. Uh, and I don't do a bunch of freshwater fishing anymore. But uh, why not? I mean, it's, it's kind of exciting. It's something different. You know what I mean? All right. Blue and kind of tannish colors. Okay, okay, okay. Gonna go with some. Look at this beautiful ostrich row, by the way. Yeah, we'll throw some blue in there, Gabe. Like Jin said, and like you said. Good recommendations. Man, okay, I really cut off some ostrich row that is way too long. It's kind of a waste. 
This is Ostra Trail from Manhattan from the Fashion District. It's awesome. Can I be cheap? Yes, I am going to be cheap. I'm going to reuse some of this. Do the weak fish care? I don't think so. Just make sure it's curved down. Yeah, my buddy who lived in Brooklyn, my good friend Tyler, who I haven't talked to in a long time. I hope he's doing well. Uh, who helped me catch my first false albacore on the by the way, and it was on an inflatable pontoon boat. Okay, you could see it on YouTube. Um, it was the first day I ever met him. And we I was like, did we just become best friends? <laughs> Risking our lives on pontoon boats for Albies? Little inflatable, like, river rafts? <laughs> I'm in. Sign me up. And uh, he lived in Brooklyn. And he went to Manhattan to the fashion district and bought these ostrich rolls. Check these out. They were like 20 bucks a piece, but they're used for like fashion. They're, I'm telling you, there's like 10 inch, 11 inch ostrich roll. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, this is like, you, you, I should gift this to Bob Popovics as a present or something. You know, it's beautiful ostrich roll. Bob Popovics probably already has it, but. He's like, who the hell are you? All right, we got some feathers, some ostrich hurl, looking very nice. Now we can add, why not? Because someone, Craig Roll, I think, said tan. I'm going to throw the tan in the form of two saddle hackle on top. How does that sound? To blend in the pink. <clears throat> that was the first video you saw on my channel. Uh, what's that one? Number name. That's what I'm calling you, number name. I completely forgot what I was talking about in the span of 30 seconds. So you're going to have to remind me. But how you doing? Not on the sides? No. No, on the top, Master Battle, because why not? Well, I guess it's kind of on the sides, but it's still on top. Kind of just fell to the sides. I still want it to be kind of more like tented hackle, you know what I mean? I'm going to go with a little blue on top, because Jin and... Uh, Jin and Gabe requested it. I'm trying to remember what the hell we were talking about. Which video was it? Imagine the beast fly? Oh, yeah. Oh, the pontoon boat Albies. Yes, the pontoon boat Albies. Thank you, Craggerall. That was, I'm telling you. I pulled up, and I see a guy inflating a raft. Okay, number name. And that's what I'm calling you. You can tell me if you want me to call you something different. Um, <laughs> I'll call you sevens. I'll call you sevens. How about that? And uh, I see a guy inflating a raft. And I'm like, what are you doing? I'm getting some blue hackle, by the way. And he's like, oh, I'm going out. I'm really getting some Albies. And he's got fly rods and stuff. And I'm like, yo, what's up? And I was like, are you going out in an inflatable raft over here in the extremely strong current? He's like, yes. For Albies? Yeah. I'm like, can I join you? He's like, yeah. And I was like, perfect. And that was my first ever false albacore. And he was so excited that I caught one. So was I. It was great. It was completely... It was completely... <laughs> we went out... Out by Orient. We went out on the North Shore by Rocky Point. Where it was extremely rough. And we launched that thing. We went out there, and we were chasing Albies. Yeah, I think it's another video. Uh, 
and like it shows us going through it doesn't look like it's bad but we were going through dangerous uh currents and rips in that little pontoon boat in the video it doesn't look like much but there's waves and stuff like whoosh, smashing into us oh man good times me and tyler in the pontoon boat catching albies People are looking at us. They're like, do you need us to call the Coast Guard? <laughs> like, just as we're putting along normally, like, not under duress. They thought we, like, got drifted out. It was great. Hey, we made it back, though. That palm and tomb boat. <sighs> I will say, though, if something went wrong, it probably wouldn't have been good. But, you know. Ah, eh, you know. It was when I was young. <sighs> Now I got a 21 foot Steiger. Skirt, skirt. Gotta fix that trim unit and go out and catch some Albies. Oh, I should put some flash on this before I start to slapping some Marabou on there, huh? Go with some pink crystal. These colors look great. Yeah, we got some herring colors going on here. So that looks pretty good. A rattle. Speaking of pink, we're going weak fish. This is going to be heavily pink, the colors. Heavily pink. But, uh, like, I'll see. Do I have a blue marker? I, I don't think so. A pink one? Probably not. I have a yellow, a red, an olive, black. I'm trying to think of marking because I don't think I have blue ram's wool. So we're going to need to figure it out. I kind of want, uh, I want the pink. I should order some pink for Amsel. I might have some. I don't know. We'll see. Because I was thinking I could just use white and color it. I probably do have pink mark. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I found a pink marker because I was cleaning out all my stuff today. I know there's a pink marker in that thing over there. Yes. Ha, 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 ha. I'm going to go with some pink marabou. So I'm stripping it off the, qu the quills here so I can get the colors top and bottom just to make it look nice and pretty. I don't think the weak fish care, but for me, it looks pretty cool. All right, I should probably change the song. We've been listening to this forever, but... It's a banner. Beats made by Ally Flies Mike. It's a banner. It ain't banner on the Bob's banner, but. Whoa, power spinning for brush makers. Very cool. I have to check that out, bro. Um, hey, Joe F, what's going on? We're tying a, a weak fish, hopefully. Pop lip. A pop lip for weak fish. It's kind of herring colored, but we're going pretty heavy on the pink. The Oasis bench one. I don't know. Somebody posted a video. It looks pretty cool of the. Uh, for some sort of powered. It's like you're using like a powered toothbrush to make a dubbing machine. I have no idea. That's what it looked like to me, if you ask me. Um. Yeah, I've seen some cool ones. How you doing, Joe? I hope you're doing well. I should really export some of these songs so I don't need to load it in my music software every time. I have to check that out, though. Oasis, Bench. Are you talking about, like, some sort of powered uh, dubbing loop thing? Or dubbing brush thing? This looks like a homemade one. Um, I think Banana posted, if I'm not wrong. Okay. So we got some white. We got pink. I'm going to add some more pink, man, because this is a full dress pop lip is what I'm doing. Kind of like the uh, school bus bomber one from his old, his first book, which inspired me as a kid forever since I was young. That's the pop lip that I strive to. Last one wasn't bad. Now this is a smaller hook too, you know, so we gotta, 
I didn't put a keel in it either. I, I guess technically I can put a keel in it. Um, or I think I can always add one to like the bend of the hook or something. But hey, fish and solo. Thank you for the raid. Give it up. Round of applause. Give it up for fish and solo. If you haven't, make sure you check out Fish and Solo on Twitch. How was your stream? I hope everything went well. Thank you for tuning in uh, earlier while I was fishing and keeping us company for a little bit. I hope you had a great stream. Welcome, everybody. How's it going, Luke? How's it going, Avid Lurker? Hey, Red Wolves. How you doing? Pallades. Hope you're doing good. Thank you again. Shout out to Fish and Solo. Check them out on Twitch. What were they up to? I hope you had I hope you had a great stream. Welcome everybody. We're working on some pop lips. Essentially the crankbait fly of the uh, or the fly version of a crankbait. So we're making flies with lips essentially that we're going to be coating with some silicone. Hey, thank you Jin. Appreciate. It. Look at you, Jin. I completely forgot how to do shoutouts. I'm not even going to lie. I forgot how to do shoutouts, but look at you. Like a professional. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank God I don't need to pay you. Because you're doing pretty good. I'd have to give you a raise. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. So we are going to be now building the head for this thing that we're going to be coating in silicone. So essentially, if you don't know, my name is Mike. I'm on Long Island. We do a lot of fly tying. We do a lot of fly fishing. We actually caught our first striped bass of the year earlier on stream, which was a lot of fun. And we're tying, we do a lot of saltwater fly tying because I do a lot of commercial fly tying for businesses. And I've just been fly tying for many years. So that's one of the, my main fortes here on Twitch and uh, YouTube as well. And we are going to be tying some pop lips, which are some funky flies for sure, to say the least. I'm just looking for the right color material. Here we go. I'm going to end up using all the white rams while I have, but that's all right. I don't think I'm going to end up using the orange. I'll throw a little bit of, uh, or I shouldn't say the yellow. I'm going to throw a little orange in there. Because somebody mentioned orange earlier. Me and Jerry just drink and watch. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you again. But uh, shout out again to Fish and Solo. Thank you. I hope you had an awesome stream. And welcome, everybody. Now, I think I might add some bucktail or something to this because the head doesn't really need to be like the silicone head really only has to be about there. So we could add some bucktail. It's probably a good time to add some bucktail. I'm thinking of just pink top and bottom because, again, I'm... I mentioned we're going pink for the uh, for the weak fish. All right, Gabe, sounds good. You're going out fishing for another spot. I hope you're doing well, man. If you're still here, good luck. Go get them. Yes, Master Battle, you wanted a little orange. Perfect. I like putting the orange in the lip. We're getting fancy. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, we had a couple different ones. There you go. Thank you, Choke and Stroke. I think there's two options. Yeah. But thank you again. Make sure you check out Fish and Solo. Again, we're going full dress pop lip here so we're essentially just tying like almost like a big bucktail deceiver in the back and then adding the ram's wool and trimming it and adding silicone to get the pop lip essentially is what I'm doing technically it's slightly different in the book but look I always to say to say you got to do two says um, that 
like especially in saltwater fly tying you can have some personal freedom if it's all technically works right then there's no wrong way of doing it so nothing that bugs me more than <clears throat> the fly tying police <laughs> that's one of the things i love about fly tying is you have personal freedom to be able to kind of essentially tie things the way you want sparse not sparse this that there's no right or wrong way of doing anything especially in salt water i guess you could argue technically with like freshwater with mayfly hatches or something but all right oh yeah we got some nice lawn white hair here Try not to trim this stuff. Now, just like that center when we tied, we're going to open this up. I could always sprinkle like a very small amount of orange in general throughout these collars actually. Probably look really sick. All right, I'll add another one here. I think I should actually probably throw a little bit on there. Thicken that up. Oh, man, that hook is sharp. Woo -hoo -hoo. And that one got me good right there. Poked me good. My hands are pretty toughened up from commercial fishing, but <clears throat> when I fly tie for quite a lot, I end up doing that a lot. My fingers end up like I, I don't feel the, uh, the nerves in the end of my fingers as well. <laughs> so I don't feel as good. Oh yeah, a little DNA in there, especially using white ram's wool. You'll know if you're you're bleeding real quick. Luckily, I'm not. But it poked me good, but it didn't uh, didn't make me bleed. I'm gonna be very careful about that. It's custom. Yep. Watch that hook. Whew, boy, that's sharp. I think these are Gamagatsu SP11s or something. The lawn shank Gamagatsus. Essentially, we just move up and keep doing what we were doing, building up this body. Keeping those pretty close together because we want a, a nice, dense ram's wool head is the way I like doing it. So that way it has nice buoyancy. It will soak up water, but you can just squeeze it above uh above water and it'll 
it'll um, what do you call dry up and then gain its buoyancy back this is the original way Bob Popovic ties it in terms of the, with the Rams wool so it's how I've always done it I see Gunnar Brammer use synthetics and I do want to experiment with that so but I think I need the right material for it so like a frizzy stiff enough material this is a much softer material but Oh, we dropping frames? What happened? We good? We back? What happened? We all right? I think we're all right. Look like we dropped frames for a sec on Twitch's side. That was strange. Unless that was just my browser, but I think we're all right. We're back. Short little drop happens. Optimum break, as we call it. Not on Twitch? Oh, okay. It was weird. On my browser, it showed, uh, it did the, like, symbol of the not like this. Like, ah, uh, no, the stream's dying. That's Twitch trying to throw me off my game. Lucky I'm a veteran streamer. Sorry. Time pop lips. Can't be concerned. Not today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he explains everything very well. He's a very intelligent uh, individual, from what I can tell. So, highly recommend him if you haven't checked out Gunnar Brammer. He's got some great stuff on YouTube. I always think people like that would uh, be amazing um, fly time streamers as well, but I don't think everybody wants to stream all the time. <laughs> Or just stream in general. I was trying to get some other amazing saltwater fly ties. I was like, hey, you should you should maybe check out streaming. This is back when Twitch was really the only way to do it. But, but we'll see maybe when it becomes more accessible, other people will do it. I know some other people do, but this was like seven, six years ago when I was really the only person doing it. And YouTube Live wasn't really a thing. In the way that it is now. Mm hmm. How many pop ups do you think you get from a patch of Rams wool? Oh, it depends. Sometimes not much depends on the size. You might not get many um, Many flies out of it. Honestly, I think this is where we go orange Yeah, you might not get many flies it depends Depends on the quality of the patch craggle roll. You might get one you might get three Like that orange one has quite a lot of good hair on it. This white one here sucks. And sometimes the patches themselves are like different sizes in terms of like the amount of physical hair that you get on there. This one's literally got like stuff in it. I have no idea what. I don't want to say what, but it's probably something not good. So I'm going to cut that and pull that out. Looks like we're out of white, so now we're going with some other. Maybe I'll mix a little yellow in too with that. Go a little yellow to fill it in because I don't have much. This is the last one, then we're going to trim it and then we're going to tie the material for the lip. Tying 14, 18 give you headaches. Size 14, 18, yeah, I bet. I don't mess with those. Too small for me. Yeah, it's already almost uh, 11. We'll glue these up and then I'm going to go make some pastrami sandwiches. Now, mind you, the silicone is going to take a little bit. I'm not going to try and dilly-dally. I have it down pretty good now. 
a lot of times I like fiddling, but I've trimmed the limbs up, uh, the lips up pretty good, so we have that set up. This one will have to do the same, but. Now I kind of just fold this back. I gotta leave myself enough room to tie that lip in the front, so. It's like a giant cotton candy fly, right? Believe it or not, Popovix had a cotton candy fly uh, in the first book. The cotton candy bunker fly. Pre hollow fly tying big flies. 18 is the smallest you do for anything. I, you know, originally, you're supposed to just pick outwards, and I still do that, but on ones this size. But I like to start with a brush just to open it up help it breathe a little in my opinion this is an old dog brush fine wire dog brush bodkin bodkin where are you where did my bodkin go oh, man I'm gonna have to organize the the table after this, the desk. Um, hmm. Oh, did I drop it? I must have. When in doubt, check the floor for something. Well, I gotta clean this up real quick. I'll just use this. It's fine. Uh, what do you do with all that catching in the bin? Do you toss it? Yeah, most of the time because I can't be bothered. But what you can do is you can do bin flies or garbage flies with all your leftovers, which we've done many times. A lot of times for fun, we just do that. We take random stuff from the trash bin and try and tie a fly with it. Like you could probably tie a shrimp fly. You could probably tie a multiple bait fish flies with all the stuff that's in my uh, little trash bin attached to my vise. I'm running this bodkin right now inside along the the hook shank to pull the material out. Open it up so we can trim it. It's kind of important because otherwise when you go to trim it You'll see gaps and stuff like that because the hair's wrapped in itself. Now I want a little bit of this white left over to kind of have a nice transition. Not too much though, so I'm kind of pulling it back. If you have a nice little convenient clip, you know, to clip onto the fly, that's when you use it. I lost mine. I have no idea where that is, so <laughs> as usual. Keep my scissors angled outwards.
kind of trying to cut a basic shape now, essentially. We want to make sure we cut this deep enough to where it's not covering the hook shank too much. Because you have to make it the pop lip relative to the size of the hook. Otherwise it won't swim right, obviously. You can add a keel as well. I didn't to this one, but we have like a rattle and stuff. But I'm going to make this one a little smaller anyway, because I want to go for weak fish. It's kind of almost using feel more than looking by holding my scissors at a certain spot to trim that right there. Almost kind of snake fly bullet shape <clears throat> to it. I don't want to take too much off the front, but we're going to add more anyway, so it'll fill it in afterwards when we tie the lip. I do want to kind of make it more uniform though. Instead of bullet shape, that was kind of just get myself set up. So I'm going to keep those scissors kind of level. That'll be our transition. We don't want to cut too much of that off. We'll slick that sign. We'll slick that a little bit back with some silicone. Man, I'm getting a little tired. <laughs> I was busy all day. I'm gonna slightly trim some of this. All right, looking good. Let's get our lip on there. Orange is a little chef's kiss. Yeah, the lip's gonna be orange. So it's gonna be more than a chef's kiss in a sec. It's gonna be screaming. Uh, what did I do? Here we go. A little yellow and a little orange. You don't need too much. You end up using too much material for the lips. It'll actually end up not being right. We want the lips to be uh, pretty flexible. Too much silicone and it won't track right. But you also want the lips to have some give to them. That'll be good. I'm going to take this now. Hopefully that's enough material. I think it will be. Let me look. that size could add a little more I think enough material to have a stiff enough lip but not too stiff
Let me fold that back. Bada beam, bada boom. Tie that off. It's all going to get coated in silicone, so. So now, trim that like this, try and get it even side to side, and then hook point. So hook point is going to be like this. Something like that. We want to leave it oversized on purpose. That's a cat brush, is it? I thought it was like a long haired duck dog brush. Because I have a different one. I think a different cat brush. Or a different brush that is a cat brush. But maybe it is. I don't know. It's a long haired dog brush. Fine, fine tooth. Maybe not. I don't know. Dog brush, cat brush. What's the difference between a dog and a cat anyway, right? Am I right? <laughs> uh, riots in the chat. Rabble, 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 rabble. All right. Now to put some silicone. I need to get some photo flow. I'll be honest with you. I don't know if uh, I'll probably glue the cinderworm one later or something because it's going to be a mess. I need to put this thing on something, but let's glue this one up. Just take a little bit off the back. Take a little bit off the back. That little fluff. We do want a nice strong connection in the back though for the lip. Okay. You wish you were making hooks this size? <laughs> my cat will play fetch more than my dog. I know I had a cat that would do that as well. That was funny. wood floors in my room are so slippery recently I can't tell you why all right a little bit of photo flow hopefully our silicone is still good because I did explode it from the back side oh that sounds kind of weird you could clip that weird but it uh I squeezed it so hard it exploded out of the seam <laughs> all right so we got some eyes here which I'm gonna get ready some gold eyes. Put like a little dollop on there and then do that one. Uh, let's see, is this still good? Let me put my headphones in before things get wild. For stock trout, yeah. Not because he probably doesn't have uh, a lot of need for flies this size.
So now I'm using silicone from the back, <laughs> which is interesting technique. But it works. Start with the eyes real quick. Get some silicone on there before. Kind of bend them and get them on there. Somewhat. Oh, damn it. Come on. Try not to get silicone on my fingers, ideally. Hate getting it on my hands. Also, it stinks. That's for certain. Put some silicone on the lip here. Pretty thin amount. This isn't going to be a monster lip because I'm going to be throwing this like primarily at night and stuff for weak fish. It's probably going to be windy as general during the spring. I think I want to just take some this and pat this down. Kind of reinforcing behind the lip here, but I don't want to go too crazy. I don't want to, that connection over there. Carp on the fly is uh, one of the most fun things I've done. Almost more fun than pike. Uh, pike. Yeah, I heard carp on the fly is a hell of a lot of fun. I've never been able to do it myself. Trying not to get silicone on my hands. Using the photo flow here to kind of pat it down into the ram's wool. I'm gonna use my dry part of my hand to kind of extend it back. I think I did get a little silicone on my fingers, but that'll be all right. Just makes a mess. Kind of extending this back. I don't want it to foul. Getting a little copious with it, but. That's pretty much it. Now we got to let it dry for a day almost, or at least a couple hours before you trim it, but I usually let it dry for a while. I want to get this body kind of shaped right though. Use that photo flow to make it smooth.
pretty much it. See that cup lip we got going on there. And we got a rattle. And that's our pop lip. And I'll essentially go fish this thing probably at night. Maybe try to stream it on Twitch. Be pitch black, but... Maybe get a GoPro and film it. Just the odd thing here and there. Want to make sure the body's level before I leave it. Or level enough. Doesn't need to be perfect. Looking good, and then I'll trim it. And we should be good for a nice looking pop lip. Just get the lip even, essentially. Especially if we don't want too much silicone on there. Just make sure it's even. And we're good. I think we can leave it. All right. Perfect. Candy corn and cotton candy pop lip. Exactly. With a rattle. Sheesh. You know what I'm talking about? All right. Well, thank you for hanging out, chat. We did some fishing. We caught our first striped bass of the year. Very happy about it. We tied up some pop lips. I'm going to do this one later. I'm going to let this hang out for a bit. And I'm going to go eat some food and stuff, too, because we went straight from fishing to uh, doing some streaming. So appreciate everybody hanging out. Let's see if we can throw a raid out. So don't go nowhere yet. And thank you to everybody on uh, YouTube for hanging out and watching. I hope everyone had a good night. Uh, let's see. What do we got? What do we got going on here? Oh, Kramit is streaming. Kramit's a cool dude who we watched for quite a while. Who's this? Oh, it's, uh, he changed his name to Brock brush uh studios fuck what was his name i don't even how did i forget his name we're gonna raid uh brock brush studios who uh airbrushes and i forgot his name he was airbrushing lures i forgot his name if anyone remembers his name awesome dude but we're gonna raid him brock brush we've raided him a million times and i forgot his previous channel name I don't know how, but what happened, by the way? Did I raid or are we still streaming? No, we're live. I want to raid a channel. No doubt, Big Trout. Yes. Oh, he's getting off now. Oh, okay, you're there, Avid Lurker. I tried to set up a raid, but I don't know how this works. It's like different. Oh, he's getting off. Okay. <clears throat> um, so it's like showing me all these different options. Interesting. So then how do I pick a channel to rate? I don't understand. Um, I think I have silicone on my hands. I got to not touch my face. I'm looking to see if anyone's doing anything fishing related. This is very interesting though. It's recommending I raid karma. <laughs> no, I know, but I like there's a feature in the dashboard of Twitch to raid. 
and uh, you used to just click that and you would pick a channel and you would just click it and it would be like, okay, get ready to raid. Uh, and you, do you, are you sure you want to raid now? And I'd be like, yep, sure. He was about to raid me. Oh, God. That's the problem with Twitch. You end up getting raid offs. <clears throat> Is there like anybody on my follow list? Take a look. I was like, who's Brock airbrushing? There's no doubt Big Trout. Yeah, it's part of the Twitch dashboard. It's how I usually used to do it, but it's a little different. Twitch has changed in the seven years I've uh, streamed, for sure. Um, oh, uh, Shook is on. We can throw a raid out to Shook. Kramit is smoking meat, though. I kind of want to throw a raid out to Kramit. He's somebody that watched for a while. He's just smoking meat, is from the looks of it. Um, and Kramit's an awesome dude. So I'm just going to do it the old school way where I type his name in. But you can also check out Shook1. Shook's awesome. We usually throw the host out uh, from the auto host. We're going to type slash raid. Oh, wrong keyboard. Kramit. Kramit's a, uh, been on Twitch for a long time, by the way. So go say hi to him. Say hello from the LI Flies Mike community. Say hello from the LI Flies Mike community. Oh, invalid what? No, that should be right. Did I spell it wrong? Is there, cause it's a capital K? How do I, why won't, this doesn't work right. Now I'm screwing everything up. Damn it, Twitch. You had to change everything. Raid channel. Do I just type his name? Oh, he's got follower only mode. Well, you can just. Stop by and go hang out. Kramat's an awesome dude. <laughs> um, but go say hi to, to Kramat. He's been on Twitch for a long time. Looks like he's smoking some meats. Hell yeah, brother. I'm going to go uh, make a sandwich because I'm starving. Thank you so much for hanging out. Tomorrow we're doing a fishing stream, all right, in the afternoon. Thank you. Enjoy the pastrami sandwich. A king of the lunch meats, you damn straight. Choke and choke. I appreciate it. That is true. Absolutely true. But uh, go say hello to Kramit. I'll go say hello myself. I'm going to go wash the silicone off my fingers. And I'm going to go eat some, some food. So appreciate it. We're going to go catch some straight bass tomorrow. You can check me out live on Twitch to see that. Uh, and we'll be doing some more live fly tying streams here soon on Twitch and YouTube. I have a new YouTube video I'm going to be working on at some point as well. So, But thank you so much for hanging out. I'll see you folks. You take it easy. We're going to go uh, say hello to Kramit. And everyone on YouTube, thanks for hanging out. And everyone on Twitch. I'll see you folks tomorrow for some uh, fishing, all right? Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you, chat. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Some pop clips. And uh, we'll see you next time. Later. You take it easy.